Good evening, give a time, Boker Tov in Berkeley, and welcome to Friends of Israel in Germany, in Kuwait, and around the world who have already tuned in today for a matinee at the theater. My name is Wayne Firestone. I'm the executive director of the America Israel Friendship League, and today our Friends Indeed series continues with our 31st episode since the start of the epidemic in March. To state the obvious, summer travel is down the tubes, it's still shut. Live theater is shuttered in the United States, in Israel, and around the world. But people continue to crave live theater. People continue to want to create and share and be a part of the creative process. Today, we celebrate and we contribute to that process with three short pieces from Israel, and around the Jewish world. All three of these pieces were meant to be performed in front of live audiences in various festivals or productions. With the collaboration of our partners at Center Stage and the Jewish Plays Project, we are pleased to share this triple bill with you today. Now, for everybody joining us live, feel free to send us your questions to the creative artists who will be joining us for a talk back at the end of the three segments. And for everybody on Facebook, please turn on your watch party so that other friends can join us live as well. Now, before we start, maybe you can quickly share in chat on whatever platform you're on, what's the last live theater show that you were at? And what city were you in when you were watching? So we would love to share some of those stories and love for you to feel a part of that last uh, theater experience. Now, Daniela Crankshaw, you're sitting in Ranana. You're the co-founder of Center Stage. I'm excited for you to start off the program with an introduction of our first short piece as a little bit of an appetizer. And Daniela, I know it's actually a bittersweet appetizer because you're sitting in an empty theater. Um, <laughs> And I know that for you, you and your husband, who literally built this theater with your own hands, and you're pointing at the camera, I know, because he's behind the camera today, um, <laughs> we're thrilled to have you here with us. And we're excited to hear more later about the first professional English theater in Israel. We had hoped to be able to broadcast this first segment live as well from your beautiful new theater, but please set the virtual stage for us for Hudson's Legacy. Thank you, Wayne. We are so excited to be here. Thank you so much for asking us to be a part of this exciting webinar. We are, we are thrilled to be a partner with you. So the, the five-minute play, let me tell you very quickly, we, um, this was the second five-minute play festival we did, which was um, in response to the shutdown and lockdown that we had, understanding that we had to... Oh, front. Can you hear us? We can. You can hear me, you just can't see me, Lutter. So I will just continue talking. It was it was part of our um, uh, five minute play festival. It was the second one. We're um, <laughs> we're having some technical difficulties. Um, we're still here, people. There we go. Um, so we, we the second one we were so uh, immensely uh, flooded with submissions, eighty submissions from around the world, from US, UK, Canada, Netherlands, Italy. It was incredible. We chose the top five to present via Zoom. And Hudson's Legacy by Steffi Rubin was one of my personal favorites and managed to wrap a whole play in, in just over five minutes. So enjoy. Papa, I am so excited to record your memories. I want Hudson to know where he came from, so it'll be so helpful as he makes his way in the world. Okay? So, um, mm, test, test. Good, good, good. Levels seem right. Papa, can you um, can you speak into the mic? Uh, me? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, test, test. Perfect. Test no, it's Good. perfect. Okay. Papa, are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so just tell your story. 
in your own words, and I will take care of the rest. Amor ist gewähnt, ach du Steffi. Ich weiß doch nicht, wo es nicht kenn ich. Papa, Papa, um, Hudson is not really going to know from Yiddish. So, so maybe just if you don't mind, uh, let's start again in English. And then that way he'll understand it and not be confused. You know, first thing. Yeah, sure. I, I, I... I, I thought that, you know, okay. I would... So, yeah. let's just start over. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> once upon a time, there was a little boy named Nachman Kalman, and oh, he would... Uh, um, uh, maybe think about using your American name. Yeah, but the story doesn't begin in America. It, it starts in, in Russia. Oh, no, I... I know, <laughs> but but it'll help make the story more relatable. You know what I mean. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a little boy named uh, Norman. Uh, so Norman had a tate. Uh, I mean, uh, a father and a mother and four brothers and three sisters, Yitzi and Pinchas, Doodle and Valdel and Bracha, Frumal and Fredel. And Wait, every time uh, that we Papa, Papa, again, uh, with the names, look, um, how is Hudson supposed to remember them all? Maybe, maybe we just distill everybody into one brother named, uh, how about uh, David and, and, and a sister, um, Beth. David? Beth? Yeah. Confidentially, Hudson will probably be an only child with the demands of my job and the cost of raising kids, but... I don't want him to think too hard about all those siblings and and really you 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 are the most important person in the story right yeah but but in those days you never knew what was gonna who's gonna make it through even even childhood with with all the the diseases terrible diseases terrible and, and other circumstances you see and and, and Valdo passed away even before their bar mitzvah and 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 and, and fruma oh, pneumonia pneumonia she was only eight. I'm oh, telling you, Papa, it was... I, I, I cannot explain that to Hudson. He, he will be traumatized. Please, can can we just stick to David and Beth for now? Oh, well, if, you, if you think it's better, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Much better. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's go on. Um, tell me where you lived. Okay, we lived in a little shtetl. Uh, uh, a suburb. A suburb. Uh, Good. Uh, <laughs> and uh okay it was it was called Troy Stignettes. Ooh, uh how about we call it Troy? Troy like in upstate New York? No, 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 no. Just um just Troy. Could be anywhere. One syllable to <laughs> so much simpler than Troy Stignettes. Yes, yeah, see? You can't even pronounce it, so how can we expect little Hudson to... It can be know? Troy. It can be Troy. Okay. <laughs> you want me to start over? I can be... No, 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 no. I, I'll just edit it. So, um, go on. Uh, so they lived in Troy. <laughs> uh, Norman loved to play outdoors, and it was especially exciting when he would hear the clippity-clop of a horse and wagon, Oh, wait, coming a horse, down, horse and wagon? Well, it was really a car, you know. It was it was coming down. Oh, yeah. I, um, I I don't think I want Hudson imagining animals in captivity. What? You know, working for masters, maybe with whips, and who knows? There were whips. I only want him to imagine horses running wild and free. Okay, so my brother and I uh, would find a shtick holz, a piece of wood, and uh, toward one end we'd hammer a nail right through the board and it stuck out the other side. And then we would go... Uh, with sorry, the wood. You, you played with a, a piece of wood and an exposed nail? Yeah, then we would we would run as fast as we could, uh, you know, behind the peasant. Oh no no no! no, no. no, no. no, no. no, no. You can't say peasant. Why not? 
It's classist. What does that mean? It shows that you look down on him. Actually, it was the other way around. Okay, how about we call him a, a farmer? That is more egalitarian. Okay, okay. chase the farmer's cart down, and uh, we finally caught up and slammed a piece of wood into the back of the cart and snagged a potato. Then we would run home. You should have seen Mama's face. She could make such a feast out of one little potato. It was Papa, amazing. That, that is stealing. I don't want Hudson to think his great grandfather or his great uncle were thieves. It was the difference between starving and not starving. There are principles here, Papa. I cannot romanticize petty larceny. I can assure you, my dear, that life in Troy was anything but romantic. Okay. You just described two boys running unsupervised through the suburbs with dangerous weapons, terrorizing your poor, unsuspecting, hardworking neighbors. Our neighbors were ignorant, drunken anti-Semites who terrorized us Jews every chance they got. Have you ever heard of pogroms? You never heard of pogroms? Yes. Yeah, you heard of pogroms? Yes. Well, you can understand that helping ourselves to an occasional potato was nothing compared to what they did to us. Spitting and calling us dirty Jews on good days, burning down our homes and running Jewish families out of town whenever they got drunk or whenever they felt like taking a joke. Uh, I hope you're not planning to include that in your story. But if I leave it out, whose story would it be? Well, I'm sorry, but I, I can't allow Hudson to be triggered by words that will make him feel unsafe. I'm sorry, but it was unsafe to be a Jew in Troistinitz. If it wasn't for the unwavering faith of my mother and father who prayed to God every day. Sorry, they, um, I, 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 ooh, I'd rather avoid the explicit mention of religion in this recording, if you don't mind. Uh, I think it's important that Hudson make his own choices and not feel compelled to embrace an ancient tribal belief that is based solely on some accident of birth. <laughs> Papa, do you, do you want to get some water? Okay then, so, um, how about we start over? Wow, thank you. Thank you, Lenny Ravitch, first and foremost. Uh, great to have you know that you're on the line from Tel Aviv, and Danielle, we're going to hear from later. Uh, just looking at some of the, the different people who called in, we've got people whose last performance was at the La, Mar La Miranda in Southern California, at uh, the Luna Stage in New Jersey, Mason Community Players, in Mason, Ohio, North Light Theater in Skokie, Illinois, uh, here in DC, uh, the Theater J, and a bunch of my friends and colleagues at the Kennedy Center, uh, a real favorite, and someone who was lucky enough to see as their last performance, Dear Evan Hansen on Broadway. So uh, we have quite a crowd here today for an array of, of people who are, are joining us. And now we're ready to begin with our next selection, uh, which is entitled Madame Magician. It will be performed live from two locations in Brooklyn. The performance itself is being adapted for this uh, Zoom production. The uh, performance is actually going to help us uh, transport ourselves back in time and place to East Germany at the end of the Cold War in the 1980s. Spoiler alert for some of you, this is a scene from a full-length play, Disappearing, that I actually wrote as an homage to the German 
poet and playwright Ella Lasker Schuler, who emigrated to Jerusalem in the 1930s. I first learned about her story in almost a footnote in a book by Amos Elon, his book, The Pity of It All, A History of the German Jewish Community until 1933. On April 1st of this year, a Brooklyn-based director, Jenna Hoffman, who's joining us today, and a cast headed by Ita Korazencher, who will be playing Fortunato, and uh, Stefan Schmidt, who will be playing uh, Daniel. They just started rehearsal for uh, this production in a short play festival at the Secret Theater in New York. We learned in March that the festival was postponed because of COVID, and as the weeks went by, we were sorry to learn that this off-Broadway theater would close its doors permanently. But with the help of a little magic and many old and new friends who are sitting in the front row right now, live from Brooklyn, we present Madame Magician. <clears throat> Thank you, young man. Weather almost got the, the worst of me. <laughs> worst winter in Europe in many, many years. I'm Fortunato. I'm sorry if I won't be better company, but I'm so tired from walking in the cold and I feel myself falling asleep. Could you stir me when the conductor makes his rounds for tickets? Of course. Why are you lugging around such a Large trunk, it seems empty inside. That is where I store my tools. Tools? What is your trade? Magic. I'm a magician. I don't believe in magic. I can tell from your questions that you are an educated person. Your German is sharp. This is not your native tongue, eh? No. Not from one of our German universities. I studied in Tel Aviv. Mm. I work here now. How interesting. I used to live there once. 
not very hospitable to magicians. Israel? I've have heard many accusations, but not that one. What do you mean? No one believed in my magic. Even the small children questioned whether I did something and not how. Well, what they can't understand, they can't believe. What they can't believe, they can't see. Was that a surprise? I expected better reviews, considering that my shows on the Egyptian side of the desert were such a hit. So, you left Egypt the star and uh, Israel empty-handed. <laughs> Not completely empty-handed. And you? Have you left Israel empty-handed? I have my academic papers. I, um, I, um, I study and uh, teach about memory from a cognitive perspective. Oh, so you're loyal to science. Loyal? Yes, I believe in science. Who doesn't? <laughs> so what kind of tricks can you do? I know many tricks, but magic isn't only about tricks. A trick is merely an illusion or a distraction. That is magic? That is a trick. Magic is really about a disconnect between cause and effect. Causation. A suspension of conventional time and space that allows for alternative realities to emerge. Realities. Without causation, there is no reality. Well, magic has existed throughout the ages. Some are inspired by it, like others are too religion or science, even walls. Like the wall through Berlin where we headed. <laughs> it's hard to deny that the concrete at Checkpoint Charlie will not be there waiting for us. Maybe today. But well, one day she too may crumble or even disappear. Can you make something disappear? Yes, I suppose. But don't confuse a magician's ability to deceive with a much greater power she possesses. What is a greater power? Revealing something that is hidden which you did not know was there. So what kind of tricks uh, um, props do you have in your trunk? My props are like memories. Memories transformed. Memories? Well, now I can see how you can travel light. Actually, the memories are heavy. Oh, that we know from science. From science only? My heaviest memories are about um, people. A girl. Yes. I see. And she's gone? Yes. Did you seek revenge? No, no, I disappeared. Revenge is temporary. Magic and memory always prevails. Is that so? Magicians proved it on stage long ago. 
How? By sewing a woman in half. That is revenge? That is memory. What, what, what do you think the problem is? Why have we stopped? It's the weather. Maybe a fallen tree is blocking the tracks. We haven't moved for at least an hour, maybe more. I wouldn't be concerned. The train passes through stations and borders as if the terrain is merely an extension of the same steely track. But the train tracks remember. How many stops did you pass before I arrived? Six, six, maybe seven. I think I fell asleep for a while too. And when were we last at a station before we stopped? I don't recall. But it seems like it has been a while. Well, we might, might be quite isolated here. I doubt they can even send someone to help us. At least we have company for the wait. I see. Don't you have... Uh a coat or something warm in the trunk? It's really turning cold in here. No need. I spoke to the conductor. Our locomotive is broken. The closest station that might send a backup may be several hours away due to the bad weather in this area. There is no electricity for heating. No heating? We are stuck here. The snow is already several feet high. Ice is forming on the inside of our car. Small towns may have lost their electricity as well. No one can last long or get very far under these conditions. Here, let me grab something to warm you from your trunk. What is that? A snow machine? Maybe this will help you decide.
cherry flavor. That should keep you warm. Don't, 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 don't close your eyes. It's dangerous. You need to move around. How much longer can we last like this? The snow is sealing off our boxcar. Like a coffin. These tracks have carried coffins before. And now they carry us and our memories. Collective memories, maybe. Maybe concealed or buried, but they do not disappear. That is magic. <sighs> that is magic. Thank you, actors. This was a great ending. Thanks, everyone, as we say in the uh, virtual theater. Now, we are thrilled to bring you another co-production with Center Stage, our third in collaboration with the U.S.-based Jewish Plays Project and our colleague David Winitsky in Philadelphia, who's hopefully calling in from uh, somewhere in the States today. Those watching closely will already know and recognize Daniela Fadelson as an actress from our first segment, the opening segment. And also, if you're looking closely on, on the stage, some of you who are friends of the American Israel Friendship League will recognize the actress sitting across from her as the AIFL's former New York-based colleague, Omer Corin, who's now in Tel Aviv University Film School, where we're very proud of her creative efforts. So. Danielle, tell us about the final selection and the role that you played in helping JPP bring this production and English theater to Israel, even with the challenges that we've faced in, in quarantine. Sure, yeah. Hi, everyone. So I was actually looking for a way to be involved in the English speaking uh, theater community when I arrived and I had worked with David Winitsky from the Jewish Place Project in New York several years ago. And I gave him a call and said, how can I be involved with your branch over here? And he said, what branch? We don't have one. And I said, oh, would you like one? So um, I formed a group of actors and readers and this kind of natural, beautiful partnership between the Jewish Place Project and Center Stage began to evolve. So um, after some time, we ended up um, choosing these three plays from the Jewish Plays Project, which works to annually find a best new play that speaks to modern Jewish identity. And we had a live stream event in June, which was great. And uh, we did 15 minute excerpts of the three plays that we chose. Then our community got to vote on the best one. And we ended up with a play called Refuge Malja by Bess Weldon. So that's what you guys are gonna see tonight. And just to tell you, just give you a little bit of background on the play. Um, so it's about a Jewish American photojournalist who meets a teenage Syrian refugee and through that interaction is forced to confront her cultural identity, family history, and a very complex past relationship and also 
asks us whether um, we are able to accept the other. So I was able to direct this piece and I put beautiful Omer in it and um, we hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> Refuge Malja by Bess Weldon. Scene three, the present, fall 2015, day number one in Greece. Jamie, is, Jamie, an American combat photographer, is working on the beach surrounded by discarded life jackets, shoes, other, clo other clothing, etc. She's photographing people arriving in boats. Walid, a teenage Syrian refugee, his feet in rags, watches Jamie from a distance. Hi. It's Salam. Alan. <laughs> you want to try? Oh, here. Hand. In English, hand. How do you say it in your language? Arabic? Kaf. 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 Hand. Good. <laughs> now, now you do one. Water. Ma'on. Ma'on. Water. 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 <laughs> Good. Uh, I'm, I'm Jamie. Jamie. What's your name? Walid. Walid. Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> now, um, go take five more and come back. Walid explores the beach, taking five pictures. Jarida. Jarida. Kiss. Kiss. <laughs> Zutra. 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 Ayun. Ayun. Hida. 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 <laughs> Good. Um, newspaper. Bag. Sweater. I shoe. You try. Newspaper. Bag. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sweater. I shoe. Sweater. I <laughs> shoes. So, one is shoe. Two are shoes. 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 Yes. Shoes. <laughs> What happened to yours? Scene seven. It's 12 years earlier, 2003 Jerusalem. Jamie and Ibrahim, a Palestinian journalist and Jamie's former lover, are in Yad Vashem. What is it? His name, right there on the list. Who? Oh. My grandfather on the passengers list. Seth Rostein. Yeah. I only ever saw one photo of him. He was on that boat. He got sent back. We we never knew what happened. He was on the St. Louis. You've heard of it? I knew the U.S. had turned away some of the refugee boats, but I had no idea how many of the passengers ended up in the camps. He disappeared. My mother never knew him, and she wouldn't let anyone talk about him. No questions. Yes, it was just easier for her to pretend, to pretend that he never existed at all. Did you ever try to figure out what happened to him? Yeah. But at some point, I, I decided I didn't want to know. I couldn't tell if it would be worse to discover that he was killed or that he just didn't want to find us. I'm sorry. Thank you. I, <laughs> when I was a kid, um, well, I never told anyone this before. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I started seeing a wolf or a ghost of one or, or 
something uh, near my closet at night. A wolf. With yellow eyes. You must have been terrified. No. No, he never scared me. He, he always looked hungry, but, but not threatening. I pretended to, to feed him, and he would lie down at my feet. He still shows up sometimes. So, the museum display disappears. Jamie and Ibrahim arrive in Ibrahim's Jerusalem apartment. So. Yes. So, did you already know you had a taste for Jewish girls, or am I your first forbidden fruit? Don't flatter yourself, my dear. I've been falling for Jewish girls from New England for years. Oh. There were no fewer than three of them in my first graduate seminar in Princeton, and each more gorgeous than the last, so exotic and yet somehow familiar. I even managed to get a date with one. Tammy Berkowitz of <laughs> Newton, Mass. But next thing I knew, she was engaged to Seth Blumenthal of Yonkers. Stop, you just made that up. Not a single word. She kisses him, pulls him onto the bed. Jamie discovers a notebook under his pillow. Ooh. Ooh. No, no, no. <laughs> Are these poems? I thought you didn't know any Arabic. I, I don't. I'm just guessing. Yes, poems or something trying to be poems. Read one to me. I, I don't think. Please. I really don't think. Come on, read. I, I like your voice. Just my voice? So what else is there? My brilliant mind, my incredible body. Well, I think we've established how much I like that. Just read. Just one. Okay. Ibrahim reads his poem in Arabic. Is there a translation? Because I'm thinking you're a genius, but I just want to be sure. I always write them in both. It's a good way to practice. No, you read it. Are you trying to embarrass me? Please. <sighs> My father used to say she cries so many tears into that one place, into the earth, beneath the tree that the olives would grow already marinated in the salt brine, ready to eat from your palm. It was his one joke, and through her tears, my mother would laugh, the only sound she makes. How many more do you have? Hundreds, notebooks full. Mostly junk, but I've been at it since I was a kid. Did you publish any of them? A couple. There is a small journal here in Jerusalem that likes the dual language thing. Mm. I submitted a bunch when I was in undergrad, undergrad, and eventually they took pity on me. So journalism's not your first love? She is just my mistress who pays the bills. <laughs> at least some of them. You're close to your mom, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. Hmm. I've never gotten along with my mother. My dad gets me. He, he got me this camera, actually. But my mother, she totally doesn't understand why I do what I do. Maybe one day she will. <laughs> she says I am possessed with a cruel independence. Is that true? Scene 14. Jamie gasps as though just waking from a dream. We see, feel, and hear the presence of Wolf. Wolf, you're confusing me. I can't tell if, if you mean I should help, or are you saying to leave will lead alone? Yes, I know I've broken every single rule by bringing him here. I'm not even really sure how it happened. But, but he walked for four days and then for four more to, to get back here with no shoes. Did you have to walk for days? Were you cold? Did anyone give you something to eat? And now that he's here, I can barely look at him. 
I don't get this. I was embedded in Iraq. I, I held the hand of a soldier in my platoon after his legs were blown off. I've been tear gassed, shot at, arrested. I've met hundreds of sweet-eyed, desperate kids before. I don't crack. But, but this, this boy, this shoeless boy, what am I supposed to do? Let him become you? Just one more lost soul staring back at me from a photograph? End of selection. Thank you, Center Stage. And thank you uh, so much, Refuge Malja, uh, the winner of the Jewish Play Plays Project. Uh, first ever competition that happened uh, during uh, COVID. And, and really kudos to uh, all of the people in the theater community uh, that helped make that happen. Obviously, this has been a period of tremendous challenge for people in the artistic community. And all of us in different ways have had to make adjustments and adaptations in order to, to continue. So we have a few moments left. And so I wanna uh, explore and hopefully um, have all of, the, um, all of our great uh, creative artists join us back for this uh, session now. Uh, for some questions that we have from the audience. One of the first ones uh, uh, really I think that we have to address and explain is with social distancing and uh, the realities of, of, of that, what has it meant uh, to put this on? And also uh, per perhaps uh, you can describe a little bit for us, Daniela, um, the stage at which you did the production that we just saw um, and and uh, where you did have some people in the theater at the time. I know now you're not allowed to have uh, a, a crowd in the theater. So maybe Danielle, you could start there just a little bit about what we saw, how you've been working with this, and overall how this has uh, you know been part of your journey in building the the, the theater in Renana. All right, thank you, Wayne. Um, I think that in uh Looking at when we did this festival, the actors, we were coming out of the, uh, we came out of the quarantine and it was definitely a time of social distancing, but realizing that with actors, it's not that easy. We tried the best that we can with the people on stage. In terms of the audience, it was more important for us to socially distance them. Um, so it was a very small uh, live audience that were watching the three excerpts and the the rest were on Zoom. So we limited it. We have we are a theater that seats 104, so it's still an intimate theater, but we only had 20 people um, in the theater watching that, comp that competition. Um, so it's been really tough. I think just to give you an, an understanding of center stage, we we signed the contract for this place last February. We spent nine months building the place. We built it with our own hands, opened in November, had time to do two very successful productions uh, for which we enjoyed some sold out evenings. So we're definitely answering a need here in, in Israel because you know there's no, there was no professional English language theater in Israel. There was a, a Russian theater, a Yiddish theater, a Hebrew theater, but no English. Um, so we, we basically picked up the torch and decided to build it. So my wonderful husband did that. He built it with his own hands and it's an amazing place. People love it. And we just hope that, you know, art is, is very important and it's, uh, we need to keep art alive and, and that's what we're trying to do. And we have to think out of the box and, you know, Wayne, kudos to you for, for doing this, this webinar and, and this is the way we need to do it right now until it is safe for us, until there is a vaccine and until it is safe for all of us. Well, it's really amazing. And as, as you know, and I'm actually seeing some comments that are coming through, um, it's not just the people on the screen. There are so many people behind the screen. And uh, yeah, it was great to get a cameo from your husband in this as well, because I know he's been an important part of this uh, journey. Omer, it's such a treat for us to see you um, on stage, even if it's the virtual stage or uh, not exactly as we had hoped. Um, I know 
from our, our time working together that, that you have uh, an understanding of the theater world, both in New York from the years that you were living there and uh, also in Israel where, where you're living and in, in, in studying now. Um, tell us a little about the differences of doing theater work and stage work in Israel as opposed to the United States. And in particular, you know, what it feels like to walk into a challenge like this to do it um, uh, with social distancing and, and without, you know, a live audience. Wow, um, big question. Well, first of all, I mean, there's so many differences. <laughs> um, but with that, during these crazy times, all of it kind of goes to the trash and it's, it becomes like a whole new thing. Uh, performing during um, during times of COVID, um, and I think this project specifically, um, as Daniela mentioned, was kind of a hybrid between acting to an audience and acting to the camera, um, which was both really. I mean, I think I think the entire world needs to reinvent, reinvent itself during this time, and theater specifically, um, because it inherently brings a lot of people together in the same room. Um, so it was, it was both challenging um, as an actor to, you know, to maneuver the, the skill set of, of acting for theater and acting for camera. Um, but at the same time, it was, um, it was really rejuvenating and it made me feel really hopeful for the medium um, that we can survive this time um, and find new ways of and new cha channels of, um, of expression and that it's not going to die. <laughs> um, um, how do you, um, I mean, how do you find how do you find different ways, like um, you know, like the play that that was right before us, Madame Magician, um, which was really beautiful. Great job, you guys. Um, you know, how do how do you utilize the like the different platforms to still bring the same heart and same energy that theater is? Um, well, I, I just want to share a compliment from all the different comments that I'm seeing coming in. Um, and the ones that I think probably would resonate most with the, the creative artists is all the thank yous that we're getting for allowing people an escape. Um, and uh, needless to say, uh, the, 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 uh, there will be a lot written and a lot performed uh, about this period. Uh, uh, for lots of different reasons, and that's part of the story. But also part of the story, as you're saying, is keeping the hope alive of theater and 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 giving people uh, the opportunity to to escape a little bit and think about something else. We learned that from Boccaccio. We learned that from others that that's an important part of the human experience uh, when we're all collectively going through something as challenging. Jenna, I'm wondering if I could get you back up on, on the screen for a moment, because uh, I know you know uh, uh, Omer, and I, 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 you were a part of a, a, a process of bringing together a team that could have been deflated and walked away uh, from their production, and yet instead uh, they said, let's do this. We don't know where it's going to go. What, what does that tell you about uh, where actors and actresses and and theater artists are at the, at this moment. Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, just the theater industry in general, um, and to be a theater artist in terms of course, theater, so. actually. Really, I should be able to freeze the frame of your head so you can talk. I think it is. Um, but um, so I mean, being a theater artist and making theater still in a time of COVID is really crazy because you have the most hardworking people that you have ever met. You have people who um, will still make work even when there's not a stage to make work. You will have, you have people who will make a stage to make work. People who will take a Zoom platform and 
figure out how to make it into um, a really creative um, theatrical form. And that's what I, that's what me, Ida and Stefan discovered when we got in the virtual rehearsal room together. And we found all of these really cool creative ways um, to play with the space. So uh, uh, D Danielle, I know you've also had your foot in, uh, you hail from Tucson, Arizona, and you've performed uh, in, in New York and in Israel. Tell us about how you see um, uh, theater around uh, 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 the world and because of your involvement with uh, Jewish Play Project. I know you've seen young people and different generations communicating and interacting even with this festival um, perhaps even more people are watching these plays and, and uh, uh, creative arts during this period because of the, uh, you know, the ability for more people to access it. Yeah, sure. And um, I just want to start off by saying that actually we had the, the wrong name up for um, the character of Ibrahim in Refuge Malja. It was actually, you saw Guy Siedemann, who's a Terrific, terrific actor. Uh, so we just wanted to say that as we had a little, uh, little mix up there. But um, yeah, sure. You know, I, I think that actually some of the most interesting plays and works of theater um, that have stuck around, um, you know, stood the test of time, actually come out in times of hardship and especially political upheaval. And I know the States is going through something entirely different than us here in addition to the COVID crisis that we're sharing. Um, so I think you're right in saying that a lot of a lot of really interesting stuff is going to come out of this period. I know for me personally it was um, a time of immense creativity and um, yeah and I think uh, it's great that Center Stage has been uh, making opportunities for people to practice that and, and tap into that because it's important that people have, who have something to say or um, can, you know, give a voice to the people out there who are not able to do so is of utmost importance. Uh, I, Ita, I don't know if we can, we, we watched you disappear. I don't know if we can watch you uh, uh, appear again on, on, on the screen. I'm sort of uh, 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 curious to know what it's felt like as a, a performing artist where you're in a medium where uh, it is sort of magical. Um, it's not the actual stage, yet at the same time, uh, you know that people are able, you were able to come up with uh, Jenna and Stefan's help uh, to try to do something on Zoom that perhaps you couldn't even do necessarily in film or on stage where you've performed otherwise. Uh, so I'm, I'm not seeing you, but can we hear you? <laughs> I'm trying, but I can't. I'm unable to start my video. Oh, there we go. Yes, now start my video. <laughs> there you go. See, the play is over and I've lost all my magic touch. What can I do? <laughs> um, yeah, it's been, it's been really the most exciting process to find these things out, you know, and just learning by doing. I think it was all um, a a great challenge for for all of us and in that challenge we found really the most exciting um things to make things appear and disappear you know and just having a scarf in the same color as a blue screen and um sorry to ruin the magic <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i guess i mean creating something like that on stage would not have been possible in that way. Would Other things would have been possible, right? So, and that's the beauty of it. And I'm really grateful to Jenna for, for directing us in this, in this magical way, you know, and in, in creating this really beautiful, tremendously magical experience for all of us. Daniela, maybe just one sent one or two sentences on what's next for center stage. We, we, people are just, you know, literally pouring out the love for, all three of the performances and and really all of the actors what what what's next danielle um i think what's next is just more of what we're doing i think as as danny was saying you know we, we're providing a platform to to um in which to to express this creativity we're going to be having uh, interviews and more readings and competitions and hopefully some kind of play as well so please do 
follow us on Facebook, follow us on our website, see what we're up to. We are not going to stay quiet. We are not going to go gentle into the night. We are going to scream and rave and shout and have a, and just have a voice. And that, that's my main mission during this time. And we hopefully going to open our doors when this is, please God, finished and done. And, and we can do that again and get the audience together back with the, uh, with the actors. Um, we just have to hang tight because this is tough, guys. This is really, really tough. Um, but we're going to do it. We've got to do it. We've got that's to do it. That is the spirit, and, and that's exactly what the intention of, of uh, this time that we had together. So again, to, to everybody involved, both on camera and behind, uh, really, this, this you helped us create some magic today. Uh, during this COVID period, our entire AIFL team has sought new ways to help educate, to entertain, and even escape a little uh, during this challenging period, because basically that's what friends do, right? Um, how do we take it to the next level? Well, um, now that you asked, starting tomorrow, we are actually launching a program called Betweens, a weekday summer program for tweens who are 10 to 12 years old. It's a free program for kids who are driving themselves and perhaps their parents a little bit crazy during this period, but it promises to be fun. And uh, thanks to the teen counselors, the Madrachot, the Madrachim, who will be from Israel and the United States participating in this. The first 100 participants to register uh, are able to start tomorrow, Monday the 20th. We already have 60 registered. And uh, then the following Monday on the 27th, we will open up for a full launch. So take a look. We had just flashed up on the screen our social channels and our website. If you know someone who's 10 or 12 years old, if you'd like to be 10 or 12 years old, we ask that you don't take up one of the spots. But if you do know someone, perhaps uh, pass on. There's going to be dance. There's going to be theater. There's going to be food. Lots of interesting stuff. What's left for the rest of you all? Well, we've got something. We've been cooking up something. For those of you that have been watching, in particular, our culinary series that we've been doing uh, with uh, at-home cooking options from Israel and the United States, we may be able to up our ante on next Sunday. Next Sunday, we have scheduled for you um, a, a delight on the 26th. We're going to have something called Dueling Delis, which will be a, uh, an exploration of two different delis. One, Cantor's Deli in Los Angeles, the largest stage performers are very familiar with, and another story deli in Chicago, Manny's in Chicago. And we will let you weigh in on where, where the best deli is and what the best deli is. And we have a celebrity guest who's going to participate and was in, uh, involved last week in our, our prep for this deli show. Uh, his name is Jeff Garland from Curb Your Enthusiasm who is a known fan of the deli. And he indeed will be enjoying, uh, yep, you heard it here first. Jeff Garland, Curb Your Enthusiasm, the Goldbergs. He will be joining us live next Sunday. Come back, join with us, have a safe week, an enjoyable week. Tell your friends about America Israel Friend Friendship League. We're trying to join together more people across the pond. You helped us do that today. Everybody stay safe, enjoy, escape. It is summer after all. Have a great week.